Welcome to Heartbreaker, your love radio. Marco was pulling his suitcase along the sidewalk, the sound of the wheels against the concrete marking the rhythm of his return. A work trip had kept him away from home, but the prospect of seeing Isabella again filled him with nervous anticipation. October was awakening with the freshness of the morning and the promise of reunions. As the night approached, Marco found himself in front of Isabella's apartment, his heart beating stronger as he pressed the doorbell. When she opened the door, her face showed surprise and evident caution. Uh, Marco, you're back. I didn't expect to see you so soon, Isabella said, a shadow of a smile touching her lips. Uh, yes, I arrived earlier than planned, Marco replied, his gaze sweeping over her face, searching for traces of the love they shared. I missed you, Isabella. Can we spend some time together? Isabella nodded, stepping back to let him in. Of course, Marco. Let's talk. The apartment still retained the same subtle aroma of jasmine that Isabella always liked to have in the fresh flowers on the coffee table, a fragrance that had always been able to soothe and seduce. They sat on the couch, the soft light from the lamp casting dancing shadows on the walls, creating an almost magical atmosphere, isolated from the outside world. The closeness ignited a spark and the air carried a palpable electricity. Marco looked at Isabella, noticing how the soft light touched her face, highlighting the features he had memorized in his heart. I missed you, he admitted. Isabella, moved by the same feeling, leaned toward him, her hands finding his. I missed you too, Marco. Their eyes met and the world around them seemed to disappear, leaving just the two of them. They moved together to the bedroom, clothes were discarded with gestures that spoke of urgency and need, each piece leaving a trail of clear intentions. In bed, under the blanket, they united with renewed passion. Marco felt every curve of Isabella under his hands, every sigh that escaped her lips as they moved in a rhythm that was solely theirs. The intensity of that night was filled with complicated and powerful emotions that still existed between them. In the end, exhausted and intertwined, they shared a comfortable silence, a solace for their tumultuous souls. Two days later, the reality of Marco's return took an unexpected turn. He answered a call from an unknown number, and an unfamiliar male voice resonated on the other side. A Marco, you don't know me, but I know you. I've been with Isabella while you were away, the voice said, calm and deliberate. The words hit Marco like a punch in the stomach. Ah, uh, what are you saying? Why should I believe you? Marco's voice trembled with a mix of shock and anger. Uh, because it's the truth, Marco. And you need to know, the man replied before hanging up, leaving Marco stunned and alone with his doubts. The revelation left Marco shaken, the trust he had in Isabella and their relationship was now irreparably compromised. He knew he needed to confront her, he needed answers. Later that day, Marco found Isabella at the same cafe where they used to spend their afternoons together. A light rain was falling outside, giving the meeting a somber air. A Isabella who is he? Why would he say something like that? Marco asked as soon as they sat down, his voice laden with disappointment and hurt. Isabella looked at Marco, her eyes brimming with tears. A uh, Marco, I... I made a mistake. I was alone, you were away, and it happened. I am so sorry. The confession was the final blow to Marco's hope that it was all just a misunderstanding. I can't accept this, Isabella. I can't be with someone who betrays my trust like this, he said, the resolution clear in his voice. He stood up, his gaze firm and his heart heavier than ever. I need to go. We need time. I need space. Leaving Isabella sitting alone, Marco walked out of the cafe, the rain wetting his face as he walked through the city streets. He felt sadness and anger, but he knew that the path ahead was his alone now. It was time to move on alone. Marco was trying to get used to the routine of a solitary life when his phone rang one afternoon. The name Isabella A glowed on the screen, a glimpse of the past he thought he had left behind. Reluctantly he answered. A Marco? It's, it's Isabella, her voice sounded uncertain, almost fragile. A Isabella, what happened? The caution in his voice was palpable. I... I had a baby, Marco. A heavy silence fell between them. The words seemed impossible, a puzzle that Marco could not unravel. A how is this possible, Isabella? We, we ended things six months ago. 
I know, it seems impossible, she said quickly. I went to the hospital yesterday with terrible pains, thinking it was something I ate or a stomach issue. But it was labor, Marco. It all happened so fast. Marco sat up abruptly, his mind spinning with the news. Uh, but how did you not know? How did we not know? I... I had no symptoms, I swear. And I've been so busy trying to sort out my life, I... I just didn't notice. You didn't notice? The incredulity in Marco's voice was evident. Isabella, this isn't something you just don't notice. There was a pause, a moment of held breath. I was scared, Marco. Scared to tell you, scared to face this alone. Marco ran his hands through his hair, trying to absorb the situation. And now, Isabella? What are you going to do? I really don't know, Marco. I needed you to know. The weight of those words hit Marco like a wave, leaving him almost breathless. He stood up, pacing back and forth as he thought about the next step. Uh, we need a DNA test, Isabella. We need to be sure. I know, I know that. I'll take care of it, I promise. Just, just give me some time to organize everything. A time, Marco murmured, the concept feeling as unreal as the news he had just received. Uh, all right, Isabella. Let me know when you're ready. Hanging up the phone, Marco stared out the window of his apartment at the horizon. The world outside seemed the same, but inside everything had changed. He was caught in a whirlwind of emotions, each vying for dominance. Doubt, fear, perhaps even a glimmer of hope. With a heavy sigh, he acknowledged that the path ahead would be anything but simple. Marco was seated at his work desk, looking at the photo Isabella had sent via her cell phone. It was an image of the baby's birth certificate, but something was oddly wrong, the father's name was intentionally blurred. Marco rubbed his eyes, frustrated and confused. After a few moments, he picked up the phone and dialed Isabella's number, which she answered after a few rings. Isabella, why is the father's name blurred in the photo you sent me? Marco's voice was firm, demanding an explanation. AOI. I don't know, it must have been a mistake when I took the photo. I was in a hurry, Isabella replied, her voice trembling slightly. Hey, Isabella, this doesn't look like a mistake. It looks deliberate, Marco insisted, feeling his distrust grow. I need clear answers. Are you hiding something from me? There was a pause on the other line. Marco, I swear I'm not trying to hide anything. I'll send you another photo, okay? Uh, that's fine, but we're going to need to do more than that. We need a DNA test, Isabella. I can't just accept this without solid proof. I understand, Marco, and you have every right to ask for that. But DNA tests are so expensive here, and I... I really can't afford it right now, she said, her voice full of concern. Then I'll pay, said Marco quickly, although the idea made him feel a twinge of anxiety about his already strained financial situation. And I want to ensure that the process is transparent. Maybe we can go to the lab together. A yes, of course. I want you to trust me, Marco. Let's do this together. Hanging up the phone, Marco sat down, his heart beating rapidly. The idea that he might be a father was at once terrifying and strangely exciting. However, the distrust he felt for Isabella poisoned any potential joy. The manipulation of the name in the birth certificate photo only intensified his fear that Isabella could somehow influence the outcome of the DNA test. He spent the rest of the day researching DNA labs in the region, determined to find one that not only offered the best accuracy but also guarantees against any type of fraud. His mind was in a whirlwind, each thought pulling him deeper into the abyss of uncertainties and fears about what was to come. The night arrived and with it an unsettling silence. Marco knew that the coming weeks would be crucial. He would have to face these challenges one by one, starting with the DNA test. Marco arrived at the hospital with a heavy heart, his mind a web of contradictory emotions. He found Isabella in the waiting room, her nervous eyes meeting his. Together, they walked in silence to the office of Dr. Lemos, the doctor who had attended Isabella during the unexpected childbirth. Dr. Lemos greeted them with a calm expression. Marco, Isabella, how can I assist you today? His voice was soft, trying to instill a tranquility that Marco could not feel. 
Dr. Lemos, I need to understand better what happened, said Marco, trying to keep his voice steady. Uh, how could Isabella give birth without knowing she was pregnant? And how did it go unnoticed in previous exams? The doctor nodded understandingly. It's rare, but not unheard of. Some women have very discreet pregnancies and if Isabella did not have significant symptoms, she could easily have confused them with other less serious conditions. Isabella interrupted, I was so focused on trying to sort out my life, dealing with my job and my own stress, that I ignored the signs that should have alerted me. I, I was afraid to face the truth. Marco looked at Isabella, trying to discern the sincerity in her words. Uh, Isabella, we know that you have manipulated situations in the past. How can I trust that this is different? She lowered her eyes, a tear running down her face. I, I understand your distrust, Marco, and I deserve it. But I am being honest about this. I never wanted things to get to this point. Dr. Lemos intervened, Marco, the situation is undoubtedly complicated. But now, the most important thing is to focus on the well-being of the baby and ensure that all responsibilities are clear and based on the truth. A yes, you're right, Marco agreed, feeling a mix of anger and compassion. Let's do the DNA test. I need to know if I am the father. Isabella nodded, wiping away her tears. A yes, let's do that. I want everything to be resolved as much as you do. With the meeting concluded, Marco left the hospital feeling a bit more stable, although still divided. Knowing that Isabella had deceived him in the past made him even more doubtful of her word. As he walked back to his car, he reflected on the duality of his emotions, knowing that the coming weeks would be decisive. It was essential to protect his future, but he also could not ignore the growing possibility that he might indeed be the father. Now, more than ever, he needed clear and definitive answers. The next day, Marco sought out a lawyer, he sat in front of Elena in her bright and organized office, a contrast to the turmoil reigning in his mind. Elena was a family law specialist, recommended by a trusted friend. He hoped she could guide him through the intricate legal paths of his situation. Elena, I want to do everything the right way. If I am the father, then I want to be involved, but I also need to be sure, explained Marco, his voice laden with determination and anxiety. Elena nodded, her attentive eyes conveying understanding. Marco, the first step is the DNA test. This will conclusively establish paternity. After that, we can discuss your legal obligations and rights, depending on the outcome. I, I know, and we're organizing that. Isabella agreed to take the test together, said Marco. But what happens if the test confirms that I am the father? What should I do? Uh, well, you'll need to consider child support, possible custody or visitation arrangements, depending on what you and Isabella decide," explained Elena. If you decide you want to be part of the baby's life, we can draw up a plan that protects your rights as a father, as well as the interests of the child. Marco nodded, absorbing every word. Uh, and what if the test shows that I am not the father? If that's the case, you will have no legal obligations, but we can help to clarify the situation to prevent future misunderstandings or claims," replied Elena. With Elena's advice fresh in mind, Marco left the office feeling somewhat more prepared to face what was to come. In the following days, he and Isabella visited an accredited laboratory to conduct the DNA test. The wait for the results was torturous, each day dragging on with a mix of dread and anticipation. During this time, Marco reflected deeply on his life and the turns it had taken. He often thought of the baby, an innocent being at the center of this entire storm. A whatever the result, I hope this child is happy and loved, Marco thought, a sense of responsibility growing within him. Finally, the day arrived. The phone rang and it was the laboratory. With his heart pounding, Marco answered. The technician's voice on the other end of the line was neutral, but each word resonated like a bell in his mind. The DNA test results are ready, Mr. Marco. You can come to the laboratory to discuss the results in detail. Marco took a deep breath. Thank you, I'll be there soon. Hanging up the phone, he prepared to leave. Regardless of the outcome, that call would mark the beginning of a new chapter in his life. With a mix of nervousness and determination, Marco headed to the laboratory, ready to face the future, whatever it might hold. 
Marco arrived at the laboratory with a mind full of expectations, but what he found there was not what he expected. The receptionist, with an expression of discomfort, delivered the unexpected news. A Mr. Marco, Ms. Isabella already came to pick up the DNA test result earlier today, she said, avoiding Marco's direct gaze. A what? Surprise and confusion took over Marco. She took it? But why didn't she inform me? We were supposed to do this together. Apologizing, the receptionist only suggested that he speak directly with her. Marco left the laboratory, feeling a wave of distrust grow within him. He immediately dialed Isabella's number. Hey Isabella, why did you take the test result without me? Marco spoke as soon as she answered, trying to control his frustration. A uh, Marco, I... I just thought it would be easier this way, Isabella responded, her voice trembling. Easier? Isabella, we agreed to do this together. What's going on? Marco insisted, his patience fading. I just... Marco, I need to tell you something. Can we meet? The conversation left Marco even more uneasy. They arranged to meet at a cafe near the park where they used to walk. Sitting at the table, waiting for Isabella, Marco began to think about the months he had been away, trying to align the events. When Isabella arrived, she looked nervous. She sat down opposite Marco, taking a sip of coffee before she began to speak. But Marco, I'm so sorry for everything. When I found out I was pregnant, I was confused, I didn't know what to do, Isabella started, avoiding Marco's gaze. Hey, Isabella, please, be straightforward with me. When exactly did you find out about the pregnancy? Marco asked, the urgency clear in his voice. It was shortly after you had left. I... I was with someone else while you were away, Marco. I didn't know whose baby it was until today, until I saw the result. Isabella's words landed like a weight in Marco's stomach. He briefly closed his eyes, absorbing the impact. And the result? Who is the father? Isabella sighed, a tear escaping her eyes. It's not you, Marco. I am so sorry. Marco's world spun for a moment. The truth was a relief and, at the same time, a new kind of pain. He looked at Isabella, seeing her not just as the woman who had betrayed him, but also as someone who was as lost as he was. In the cafe, as Isabella tried to discreetly wipe away her tears, Marco felt a revolt boiling inside him. All the compassion that had momentarily occupied his heart evaporated, replaced by a sharp and biting bitterness. Isabella, did you really think you could use this to bring us back together? To bring me back? Marco said, his voice raised by frustration and disappointment. A uh, Marco, I... I was confused. I really thought the baby might be yours, Isabella stuttered, searching for words that could soften the situation. Oh, confused? This is much more than confusion, Isabella. This is manipulation. You played with my life, with my emotions, expecting what? That I would just forget everything that happened and come running back to you as soon as you said you had my child? Marco continued, each word laden with the pain and anger of having been deceived. I didn't. I didn't mean to hurt you, Marco. I just didn't want to deal with this alone, Isabella tried to explain, but her words seemed empty and insufficient. A hurt? Isabella, you not only hurt me, but you also tried to trap me in a life based on a lie. That's not love, that's selfishness, Marco retorted, the clarity of his feelings cutting through the air between them. Isabella looked down, unable to meet Marco's gaze. Gaim sorry, Marco. I really am. Marco stood up, placing his hands on the table and leaning slightly toward Isabella. You know, Isabella, I feel sorry too. Sorry for believing there was still something good between us. Sorry for letting this situation go so far. He straightened up, looking at her one last time. I don't want to see you anymore, Isabella. I need to move on and you should too. Take care of your child and try to be honest, at least with him. With these words, Marco turned and left the cafe, leaving Isabella alone with her tears and remorse. He walked through the streets, feeling a mix of relief and emptiness. The truth hurt, but it was better than living in the shadow of a lie. Marco knew the path ahead would be difficult, but now, at least, he could tread it with a clear conscience and a heart ready to heal.